Hi everyone, so we're carrying on with the first lesson of the differentiation three pack. Um, I'm on a computer with five minute video time, so I'm sorry about that. It's asking to identify which points, parts of the curve are convex or concave. So we just need to nip back and just have another look at that. Oh, hang on, have I missed something? Nope, no, I've done that, haven't I? Yeah, I've done that question. This part here about convex, which bits are convex and which bits are concave? So if it looks like a, a V or a U, it's convex. If it looks like a cave, it's concave. So parts of it. Let's page one, aren't we? So A to B looks like part of a cave. So it's concave. B to C looks like an E to the X. So it's convex. C to D is still going up, so it's convex. D to E, can't really tell, but it's going more like that. So D to E is concave because it looks like it's part of a cave entrance. E to F is looking more concave, like a cave entrance. And F to G is looking definitely concave. Now if you look, F is a stationary point, and B is also a stationary point. Now, it tells us, so it says here, uh, at which points of the curve is it stationary? So that's B and F, that's okay, I've answered my own question before I even read the question. It says, at which points does it change from being convex to concave? Now, I always think of this as a roller coaster. So, and it's easy to think about coming down a roller coaster. So, you're at the top and you come down and it gets really, really steep and then it starts to come back round. At this point, somewhere around here, it's as steep as it's ever going to possibly get. At that point, that's where it changes from being concave to convex. And you imagine yourself in that roller coaster, that point where you're leaning forward, it's going to like tip you out as far as possible, and then it starts to come back round. That is the change between convex and concave. And I guess if it's going up, it's like a similar idea, where it like chugs up a hill, and it leans you back, and then it starts to bring you forward. So there's a bit where you're leaning back as far as you can, thinking that if that chain breaks, I'm knackered. So that's going from a convex oops, to a concave. It's that point where it changes. That's what we're interested in. So what they've got is a B and D. B and D, because it's changing there. As well as it being stationary. Look at that one there. But um, it's D because it's kind of going up, chugging up, and then it's coming back down again. So B and D. So the point of inflection is where it changes. That's the important bit. That bit where you're leaning back as far as you'll go, or leaning forward as far as you go. So that's my B and my D. There. So it says on the same graph, draw the gradient function. I'm going to do this fast, but I've got a positive gradient steep go into positive gradient zero. So I've got a graph which will come down like that. Then I've got positive gradient getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I've got a stationary point. So the gradient, the, that value there is zero. But as I follow it, so if I put that down there as zero, it goes up, it gets as steep as it's getting. Remember at D, there I am leaning back. So at D, it's as high as it's getting. And then from E onwards, the gradient is getting smaller. Uh, so let me remove some of the other junk I've got in here that I don't want. So the graph will go up to where D is. So there's a gradient. Uh, it kind of peaks out there and then comes back down like that. There. So that lines up. And that lines up with the points of inflection. The gradient of the gradient is zero at the point of inflection. So the second differential is zero. So it says at which point the gradient function is zero. So that's B and D. So we're trying to stress the point that the gradient of the